Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Kapow Radio Show, sponsored by Fifth Hook Media. Go to fifthhookmedia.com. There's links there to all our books and other things. You can get them on Amazon, other online digital retailers. Fifthhookmedia.com is the company sponsoring the Kapow Radio Show. Today, we're going to talk about spiritual audio. What? What is spiritual audio? I'm going to explain that to you. What happened last night, go to bed. As usual, we always pray for protection, pray for people, but we also pray for wisdom in our sleep. If God will teach us something, oftentimes he does. Last night I wake up, wee hours in the morning, with the words unity in my mind. And it's not the kind of unity that you would think. It's not um, united. It's unity as it applies to audio recording. I know it sounds strange, but it makes sense. So the Lord gave me a spiritual lesson on spiritual audio that I want to share with you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get technical about audio recording for you so I can lay down the foundation. I'm going to play you some clips of what's a good mix, what's a bad mix, things like that. And then we're going to apply it spiritually. And then I'm going to round it out and glue it all together with scripture. And you're going to see what I'm talking about about spiritual audio and about unity and what this means, especially in today's world and what's going on uh, all over the globe. But here in the United States where we have 85% of our listeners were entering a time of disunity. There is no unity. That's very divide, divided. Uh, I doubt there's anybody listening in any country that has unity in their country. And we have people from Slovenia, uh, from Australia, you know, United Kingdom. I think we have a listener in Japan. I don't know. Uh, but it would be hard-pressed to say, oh, we have a unified country. So this lesson is going to apply to everybody no matter where you live. I just finished reading Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare written by Paul and Linda Villanueva. And I highly recommend it to all Kingdom Against Powers of Wickedness radio listeners. This book is about saving your marriage from destruction. It is a true and vivid account about adultery, witchcraft, curses, spells, and evil spirits, all attempting to dismantle and annihilate lives. This is an excellent training manual for building a stronger marriage by exposing the tactics your enemies use against you. Ultimately, the book glorifies the transformational power of God through submission to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is a good thing. Demons in My Marriage Bed from all online digital retailers, such as Amazon.com and Apple iBooks, FifthHookMedia.com. That is F-I-F-T-H-O-O-K Media.com. Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, changed the way my spouse and I conduct spiritual battle and has increased our alertness level to the tactics of Satan. Please do not be fooled that such things cannot happen to you. Rather, get prepared and become the spiritual warrior needed to overcome in these perilous times in which we all live. God bless you all. All right, spiritual audio, the art of unity. And here's what I'm talking about. What is audio unity? So today, let's pretend all of us, all you listeners, you're in the recording studio and you're a recording engineer. Today, you're a recording engineer. You're in a recording studio. You're looking down at your mixing board, and you have instruments that you're recording and laying down tracks, and you're later going to mix those. So as you look down on your board, you see 0 dB, 0 dB, right, decibels, 0 decibels about in the middle, a little above the middle way of your board. That's unity. That's called a unity setting. That's neither too low nor too high. That's like right in the middle. It's called unity. If you go above zero dB, you you can go up to um, six dB plus six dB, and it becomes very loud. Or you go below zero dB and it gets softer, so soft that maybe you can't hear it. So unity is you start things off in unity, right? And later on, you're going to kind of mix it up or down a bit to get things to finally mix together and be unified as one in a recording mix. But right now, you need to start at unity. You need to start 
all together, right? So all the instruments are set at zero dB. And like I said, you're going to record at zero dB or a little lower because if you record an instrument too high, like say drums, for example, that have a real sharp attack on a snare, you know, whap, whap. If it's too high, it's going to distort. It's going to clip that signal, especially in digital recording, which we do. It's going to clip and it's going to distort that signal. And once that distortion enters that audio file, you can't get rid of it. You can never clean it up. You can never clean it up. So you want to be very careful about distortion and clipping, right, as an audio engineer. And you also want to leave in your recording enough headroom. So you don't want to be recording so loud that you have nowhere to go if you need to raise the volume on certain instruments. So you want to be able to go higher. So it's better to go a little lower in your recording than it is to go too hot. You understand? This will all make sense spiritually as we go. So why use Audio Unity? So starting at zero dB, it gives the mix a starting point. So here we are today. We're all Kapow recording engineers, and we're going to record uh, some music. We're going to mix some instruments, and we're going to make a, a very nice song. So in order to do that, we need a starting point. So we don't want to start with drums at six, having them distort and clip, and then have um, the guitar down at minus 40 because you're not going to be able to hear it in the mix. So you want everything almost even. Even though it's not a balanced mix yet, you want to start off at unity. You, You want to start off where things are equal and then you can kind of make some adjustments to make it better. All right. So the engineer moves audio channels up and down minus or plus. Now, if he's going to move it down, you can go all the way down to minus 40 minus zero and turn it all the way off and bring it up. Or like I said, you can go up to plus six DB and you know, distort it or clip it sometimes. So to get a proper mix or a proper balance of instruments, we need to start at unity. So the final outcome, the goal is to produce a balanced mix to the ears of the audio engineer, you. You're the one that's going to determine if it's a balanced mix, if it sounds unified, Right. Even even afterwards, if your unity has changed a little bit, some instruments are hotter than others. Others are softer. The end result is a balanced, unified mix. But we all have to start in unity. So that's what I mean by audio unity. It's not the kind of unity like we're all holding hands and we're all united. It's I'm talking a technical term. And then I'm going to talk spiritual audio, spiritual audio. So how is audio unity used in a recording studio? How are we going to, how are we going to use it as Kapow recording engineers? How are we going to use it today? Um, let me give you an example. You're going to have some studio monitors in front of you, some studio monitors, and they're going to be, um, you know, at a, you know, maybe a 45 degree angle in front of you uh, pointing at each ear so that you can hear the mix and you can hear all the instrumentation um, in, in its cleanest form, right? You've got some nice studio monitors. But you find out in your little um, setup there in your office that maybe one speaker's, uh, you know, a foot closer than the other one. Or maybe the angle's not quite right where you sit at your desk and you can't have it just perfect, So the studio monitors are both set at unity. They're both set at zero dB unity. They're neither louder nor softer. They're just at unity, right? So the one monitor that's farther away, well, you need to know, well, that needs to be just a little hotter in order to make that balance correct. Or the one that's closer needs to be a little lower. So 
you go get a um, what it's called an SPL meter, so that you can you can use a meter to determine just how loud these speakers are, and you run some uh, pink noise. It's called pink noise. You run some pink noise through the um, speakers. It's it's pink noise is like white noise. It's it's hissing, um, but it. Um, it uses a certain frequency, and the SPL meter is picking up on, on these frequencies. So you run this pink noise on the left speaker, and you look down at your at your monitor, and you say, wow, it's registering 75 dB. That's pretty good. It's nice, good, good and loud. I can use that. So then you turn the pink noise all the way to the right speaker, and you notice that because it's a little farther away, it's registering at uh, 69 dB. So in order to balance that, you go to the right speaker and where it's set to unity, you turn it up slightly until your meter now reads 75 dB. That matches your left speaker. So the point is, Though your unity has changed on your right speaker because it's farther away, to you, the audio engineer, to your ears, the sound now, the same amount of frequency coming at you, the same volume, is exactly the same. So therefore, you can hear all the nuances of the music that you're mixing. That is called audio unity. You're using the audio unity. So does that make sense so far? Good. Now the art of mixing, because now we're going to mix a song. We're going to, we're going to make a record, right? We're going to make a CD. So the art of mixing. So what is mixing? So mix mixing is taking the unity as a foundation and then bringing recorded sounds up or down in the mix to get a unified or a balanced work out of it. So the unity is really foundational. How is the mixing done? How is the mixing done in real life? You know what? It's done using your eyes and your ears. So I want you to start thinking about eyes to see and ears to hear. Eyes to see and ears to hear, the biblical principle of that. Because in today's digital world, as you're recording digital audio, you're looking at your computer screen or you're recording software and you're looking at monitors and meters. And so you have a visual, if your signal's too loud, if it's clipping, if it's, you know, too low, uh, or if it's muted, it's off, you have a visual of that, but you cannot mix using your eyes. You still have to use your ears. So your eyes might see something, but your ears hear it as good or as bad. It's very subjective as a human. It's very subjective. Now, professional audio engineers, recording engineers, have uh, not only a lot of training, schooling in sound and frequencies and how things work, they also have developed tremendous sensitivities with their ears. They hear things that, uh, you know, the rest of us just don't hear. These guys are professionals. So they use their subjective hearing to say, well, that sounds good or that doesn't sound good. And that is how mixing is done to get a balanced work. So they have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. And it's the same thing spiritually, right? The better the engineer, the better the mix. Okay, so here I am at Kapow uh, Radio Podcast Studio, and I'm mixing some things, right? And I go, ah, I can mix this. I, I kind of, you know, I like this where, you know, where this guitar fits in and where the vocal fits and everything. But I couldn't even come into the same room as, say, the audio engineer or the... Uh, mastering engineer because the audio is then mastered after it's mixed by somebody else. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of processes here. I couldn't even go into the same room as, as the fellows that are, that are doing Adele's music. I mean, these guys are, 
you know, w- way out there in their education and in their sensitivities and stuff. So the better the engineer, of course, the better the mix, the better, you know, the quality of, of the sound. So saying that, because we're going to talk about spiritual audio, the greatest spiritual audio engineer, the only one, the best is Yahweh himself is God as he mixes us spiritually and fine tunes us. The very worst engineer out there is the devils or the Satans. They're, they're the worst. And that's why they have confusion. That's why today here in America, like I said, 85% of our listeners are here in America. We're days away from a new presidential administration. And there's so much divisiveness. There's so much confusion that it's, it can only come from Satan because as he sits at the controls, he does bad mixes. He doesn't, he doesn't operate with unity. Everything is screaming high. Everything is, and then truth is drowned out to nothing, but falsehood is, is, is elevated to, to its distortion where it's unusable, unhearable, unbearable. Horrible, horrible sounds come from from the devils mixing spiritual audio. And only God can mix pure, beautiful music using you and I as instruments. Now, let me explain. Before I go further, before I go further, let me play some examples so you can hear of some Good and bad mixes. There's, they're, they're um, I think they're 48 second clips, so they're they're very small. And what I'm about to play you is a uh, is an audio. It's a clip. Do, do you remember? Uh, probably a a month and a half ago, um, I talked about uh, how the Lord gave me a song in my sleep called "Waiting Now for You." In fact, we did a show. I think. Um, we did a show. I don't know if it was a, I think it was a Freedom Friday show we did with that title, Freedom Friday, Waiting Now for You, I believe. And I talked about how the, this, these, this song, this melody came to me and these words, Waiting Now for You. And it was a longing to see uh, my Lord again. It was a longing to go home to the place that I belong, uh, to end the sojourn here and to, to, to spend eternity with, with my Lord. There was a longing there, Waiting Now to, waiting now for you. And at first, you know, I thought, well, that's, it's, it's kind of, it's like a rapture song. It's like a end of the age song, but, but it, it became much more than that. Uh, and as the lyrics came to me, uh, the, the lyrics are, it starts off in the garden of Eden where Adam and Eve at the cool of the evening would wait for the Lord. They would, hear him they would hear the lord in the evening say and they would wait for him and they would fellowship and that's the first part of waiting now for him and then this serpent comes in and he makes promises that he can't keep and this, this the souls are dying and he creates all this havoc and after this havoc they're no longer waiting for God, but God comes down and says, where are you guys? And well, we hid, you know, well, who who told you you were naked? And so the song continues. I'm waiting now for you. It's my longing. It's your longing to get back to the garden, to, to have fellowship with God again. And then the third part of the song, there's a movement in the middle that, that represents the chaos after the fall. And then the third part of the song is about leaving the garden, leaving Eden and going east of Eden into Babylon and building these great cities and um, pitching them with tar and, and, and burnishing them with gold, you know, to reach the stars because you're trying to make up that fellowship. You're trying to make up that whole of that communion with, with God, with the creator but the one who created us and try to get back to a place that you can't get back to unless he makes provision for it. And so at the end 
of this last movement of the song still waiting now for you. And we find ourselves today, thousands of years later, still waiting for him. And if he doesn't return in our lifetime, we know 100% that this body will die. And when our souls are released, when our time is up, we will go back and be with him. So it's that longing waiting now for you. So that song uh, came to me back in November. Actually, it came to me Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving night is when it came to me. So I started working on it. And uh, I'm not done with it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I started working on it. That's a little, I'm going to play you a little clip of it. Um, Miss Kapow will sing uh, the lyric. She's going to sing the lead vocal on it. What you're going to hear is my track vocal so that she knows how the melody goes. And it's just, it's a placement there. But um, she will be singing it. So bear with my voice. But the music and everything is pretty much set in place. So what I'm going to play for you is a 48 second clip of the mix that I like that I did to my ears. It sounds good. So for all intents and purposes of this teaching, um, this is a proper mix. So let's listen to how a mix would sound. And then we're going to listen to a couple of bad mixes so I can make my point. All right. Okay, so you can hear what I think is a is a decent mix. You can hear the vocal up front, so you can hear all the lyrics. You can hear the drums. The drums are, are punchy and kind of driving this song. Um, I'm a drummer, so I like my drums a little hot. I like them just under the vocal. You can hear the bass. Um, you can hear the frequency of the bass, but it's not overpowering. And then the elements of the of the guitar and the piano talking back to each other on the right and left speakers. Um, and you can, you can hear all these things mixed in uh, pretty well. Now, we all know, all of you know, what a good mix sounds like because you grew up listening to music all your life. And so no matter what kind of music you like or what you have listened to in the past or do now, if you're listening to professional recordings, which you are, you've all heard and know what a good mix sounds like. Even if you don't know the elements of it, you go, that sounds good. And if you were to hear one bad, you would go, that's bad. Maybe you don't know why it irritates you or that frequency um, grates on your nerve or something, but you would know it was a bad mix. All right, so let me play a couple of bad mixes so you can see what I'm talking about. Simply horrible. When it starts off, you hear a very loud um, string section, very loud. Uh, the the uh, guitar doodling is very soft. The piano is way out there. And then you don't hear any vocal. You don't hear any of the vocal. Then the chorus or the uh, verse comes in. That vocal's really loud. 
and um and everything's just out of balance out of sync and the bass is overpowering you just hear this bass throughout the whole song horrible mix you may not know the elements of what's making that horrible mix but it's totally out of unity it wasn't started off at unity it was then um just horrible so you can kind of see where where I'm going with this. Okay, one more. Let's do one more bad mix, and then we're going to talk about the spiritual nature of spiritual audio. Okay, absolutely horrible. What was wrong with that one? Well, the guitar is way over the top, very loud. Um, the the drums uh, are just buried in the mix. You can't hear any vocal. And then you have this uh, guitar doodling that's way over the top, doing all the doodle work. And it's just uh, a horrible mix. You can't hear anything. You don't have any idea what the song's about, where it's going or anything. So examples of a bad mix. Those are, that's what Satan does uh, in life. That's what Satan does to society, to our governments, everything. He's a horrible spiritual audio engineer. Horrible. In fact, he purposely likes to mix confusion. He purposely likes it like that because he is the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion and chaos. And God's not a liar. So his mixes, his spiritual mixes, his audio unity is perfection and beautiful. Now, we are the instruments in God's mix. So let me explain this. God is the ultimate spiritual engineer, like I said before, and he takes us at unity level. He begins to take us at unity level. And what does that mean? It means that we are in agreement with essential and foundational doctrines commandments and precepts of God. I'm going to repeat that. We are in agreement with the essential and foundational doctrines, commandments, and precepts of God. Folks, you're not going to be at unity level when you hear of a church ordaining homosexual pastors or lesbian pastors you're not at unity with them. God is not mixing them in a beautiful song with you. They're being mixed by Satan. Because those folks are not following the commandments, the precepts, God's holiness that's required. They're not following that. That's confusion and chaos. That is not you. You're not being mixed in that song. You understand that. See how you can you see how you can see this. It's an object lesson. And you ask yourself, what's the mix? Is it ugly? Is it chaotic? It sounds bad. It looks bad. That's not of God. God takes us all at unity level. Foundational doctrines were all agreed upon that. Okay. We hold fast to the biblical doctrines of salvation, resurrection, God's holiness, God's judgments, eternal punishment, the deity of Christ, the attributes of God, and so on, on and on and on, right? We all hold fast to those doctrines. When you don't hold fast to those doctrines and the truths of God, then you're not at unity level. He can't mix you into the beautiful song. You're, you're not an instrument. You're noise. But that's not us, right? We're instruments. In other words, we are saved 
We are assured of our salvation through the work, the promise, and directives of our Savior, and we live a life pleasing to God according to His Word. We live a life pleasing to God according to His Word. This is unity. This is starting at zero dBs, folks. Once you start at zero dB, once you're at unity, the great almighty spiritual audio engineer of the universe can then mix your life with others to create beautiful music, beautiful spiritual music, and to do his will. God then brings some of us down a notch, right? Because we're too loud. And then he brings some of us up a little bit because we're too soft. So, like, say we have opinions and non-essential matters. Those things can be mixed as long as, as, long as we have our foundational doctrine. Let me give you an example. Uh, many of you have listened to us for years and years. You know that I do not believe in eternal security. I believe that a person can lose their salvation if they reject God and they reject the things of God and, and continue on into a life of sin, even though once they may have been saved. And those who have listened to me for a while, you've heard me tell the story about how I backslid and I knew, I knew full well that if I were to die, I would die and go to hell. I knew that. But I could not convince a pastor friend of mine of that because he said, but you didn't. You didn't die. God didn't let you die. So therefore, he, you know, you can't be taken from his hand, blah, blah, blah. But my experience, I experienced backslidden condition that I knew without a shadow of a doubt I would die and go to hell. I do not believe in eternal security in that sense. There are some who do. And I think it's horrible if some believe in eternal security or preach eternal security and then live a life of sin thinking that they were once saved. That's horrible. Just as bad are people like me who say, well, I don't believe in eternal security. Therefore, I have to work extra hard to make sure that I'm saved. And so I go into a system of works. That's just as bad. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's an imbalance. So say I have a Calvinist friend and a Calvinist friend is leading a life pleasing to God. He is leading a godly life based on biblical principles, foundations. His essential doctrines are there, but yet he believes in eternal security. That's okay because he's living a life pleasing to God. It's not his eternal security beliefs that matter. It's his life pleasing to God. And then he's my friend and I don't believe in security, eternal security, but I'm living a life pleasing to God. We're starting at zero dB. We're starting at unity because we are unified in what? In our commandments and our precepts and our doctrines of God, of Christ, of our salvation, not opinions and things that are non-essential. You understand what I'm saying? You can say the same thing for people who believe in pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, pre-wrath, rapture. Maybe they don't even believe in a rapture at all. What's their essential doctrines? Are they living a life pleasing to God? Can they be in the mix? I hope this is making sense. But if someone... If someone is not living a life pleasing to God, they're not embracing those essential doctrines and biblical truths. There can be no unity. That's why I use the example. If you have a church or someone who says, oh, we're ordaining, you know, homosexual pastors or lesbians could be leaders or they can, it's okay. It's not the homosexuality. It's the sin. It's, it's the following of the flesh. You're, they're so concerned about their sexual desires. They're not spiritual minded of the things of God. There's no unity there. There's no unity. 
there has to be a foundational life pleasing to God to be at audio, spiritual audio unity, to begin, for God to begin to mix us. Now let's look at some of these scriptures. Let's look at some of these scriptures of unity. If you if you get on your uh, Bible software and you just do a biblical search, or especially of the Old Testament, of the word one, as in unity, one, you're going to find a lot of other ones. You'll find number, you know, but one, you're going to find just, hundreds of scriptures that talk about being one in unity. I'm just going to give you a few, just a few I, I, I picked up. Let's look at Genesis eleven six through nine. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Okay. This is Babylon, right? It's negative unity, but they're in unity. Right? They started off at zero dB. They're all agreeing. Well, then God says, um, go to, let us go down. And there confound their language. They may, they may not understand one another's speech. He, God confounds them. And the Lord scattered them abroad from thence, from the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. And it was called Babel. You see, because they were in unity, but they were not in God's unity. They were in their own unity or even worse, Satan's unity. That's a negative example of that. But you can also go right to Genesis, the beginning of the creation story, and see that God separated the the waters from the earth and the waters uh, became one. Unity is all over the place. It's a principle of God. He starts at unity and then mixes it. He mixes it. So let's look at another negative unity. Uh, Daniel 424, Nebuchadnezzar has a dream and Daniel's interpreting it. And uh, Daniel says to him uh, in verse 42, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. What? And whereas thou sawest iron mixed, we're just talking about mixing, God being the ultimate mixer. Who's mixing this? Who's mixing miry clay with iron? Well, the pronoun there is they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. My opinion, these are the fallen ones. These are fallen angels mixing their seed with men like they have been since Genesis 6, 6, 4. And this is the last kingdom but it shall not cleave one to another, just just as iron is not mixed with clay. You can't you can't make them stick. See, there's a mixing. Th- these two elements are not starting in unity. They're two separate elements. They can't start in unity, so they can't properly be mixed. It's just noise. This is satanic. This is a satanic mixing of the seed. This isn't from God. Let's look at, um, uh, you know, because I live in a negative. Let's look at some more negative stuff. Uh, This is Matthew 7, 19 through 22. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. What their fruits? The unity. The tree is unified. You don't have a tree and go, well, let's see. There's a pear on one side, an apple on one side, and hey, a banana. The, the, the fruits are unified, whether good or bad. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What is that? That's unity. That's spiritual audio unity right there. Everyone unified. How are they unified? Doing the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What is the will of Christ's father to obey his commands, his precepts, to love him, from him to be your God and you to be his people. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have not have, have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. You would think that would, they would be unified, but they're not unified in their works. They're not unified in casting out devils. 
they're only unified in their communion with God. Waiting now for you. I'm waiting now for you because I want to walk with you in the garden again. I want to go back to my light natured being and get out of the prison planet of this reptilian skin. And then Christ says, will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What are they unified in? Iniquity. It's chaos. They're not unified in Christ. None of us want to hear that. None of us. Let's be unified. Let's see. Let's go to Revelation 3, 14. The church of Laodicea. Uh, Christ says to this in verse 15, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. See, they're mixed. It's a mixing. I would thou wert cold or hot. I'd rather have you cold or hot, he says, instead of just lukewarm. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. You see the mixing? They're neither cold or hot. They're lukewarm. It's, it's, it's an improper mix. You should either be cold or hot. You can't. There are two things that can't be. They can't start at unity. Is this a godly mix or a devil mix? It's a devil mix. He causes confusion. He causes ugliness. He, he, makes, he makes spiritual audio ugly. And Jesus goes on, he says, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Church of Laodicea fooling themselves because they're a church at Laodicea. Okay, let me try to find some positive stuff. I don't know. Um, let's go to Exodus twelve forty nine. Um. It's just 1249 says one law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. One law. Unity. One law shall be to him and to the stranger and those who are sojourning with you. Unity. Obeyment of obeying of the commands, the precepts, the doctrines that you received from the apostles and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Unity, so God can mix you properly into his music. It's it's vital. Let's look at Leviticus 24. Um, oh, oh it's, it's very similar. Ye shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger as for one of your own country. For I am the Lord your God. I am the Yahweh your Elohim. One. It's all over the it's all over the word. I am saying it's not I'm just not taking scriptures out of context. It's the whole context of the biblical message is unity with God. Yoga means unity with deity. Do you know that? Yoga means yoked. Unity, yoked with deity. That's what yoga means. So when a Christian practices yoga or a non-Christian practices yoga. They are doing the exact same body movements that are yoked to deities, devils and demons. No place for the Christian life, folks. You can't be yoked with devils. You have to be yoked with Yahweh you have to start at unity, audio, spiritual audio unity, so he can mix you. He can mix you with others to form a church, not a building and not a business, a real church of Christ. You have to be mixed. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 8, he says, now they there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Can you see the unity? Where's the unity at? In the gifts? 
All the prophets get together and do a prophet school. All the prophets get together and do a prophecy conference. All the teachers get together and do a teaching conference. All the pastors get together and do a pastoral conference. There's diversities of gifts, but where's the unity? The same spirit. You you have to be unified. You have to be in Christ, God the Father, and Yahweh. And Paul goes on in verse 5, he says, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. That's why I can be on the mixing board with a Calvinist that's living a holy life pleasing to God that believes in the preservation of the saints. And I can be on the same mixing board if I'm living a life holy and pleasing to God. And I believe that you can lose your salvation if you continue in sin and we can be on the same mixing board and God can make beautiful music because we're unified. Our unity uh, uh, is in the doctrines of God and our love for God. Does that make sense? And I'm going to stop there because I mean, there's just dozens and dozens of scriptures uh, that you can you can find that talk about unity and being one. I mean, even in Deuteronomy, you know, um, Shema, O Israel, hear, O Israel, your God is one. Audio unity, spiritual audio. You start at a set place, foundation. And then God is at the mixing board and he makes something beautiful. When Satan's at the mixing board with disunity, it's chaos and noise and irritation and divisiveness and hatred and all those things listed in Galatians 5 that are fruits of the flesh. It's a horrible life. Okay, that's going to conclude the message I wanted to give to you guys. And we're going to end with my favorite saying. Through all of this, through all the confusion, everything that's going around and on and about you, remember this, Paul's words. All I know is Jesus Christ and him crucified for me. Let's be united in that. All we know is Jesus Christ and him crucified for us. Good night. Appreciate you listening. And we'll talk to you soon. I've heard the wisdom from the wise. The wise heard the storm. Sins that I did commit For which Jesus died on
spaceships that might come from 